Okay, video f uh, video two from unit four, um, vertical and horizontal translations. Remember, we were calling our horizontal translations phase shifts. So that's the better term for this, phase shifts. So let's remind you where that phase shift come from. It comes from. It's the one that's inside of the parentheses, and that's going to move us left and right. Um, reminder, it always goes the opposite from what it looks like. So we're going to start by um, just the reminder of um, this is our sine graph, and this is our cosine graph. And if we're moving um, sine of um, x minus pi, then I would be shifting everything over to the right by pi, and my graph would look like this. And if I was doing, um, for example, our cosine graph, and I wanted to do the cosine of x plus pi, then I would be moving everything over to the left by pi and my graph would look like this. All right, let's get started with some actual graphs. So here's our first function we're going to try. We're going to start with f of x equals the sine of x minus pi. Now if you need to pause the video to go ahead and write down this chart, then go ahead um, and then your axes we're going to um, decorate in a minute with the graph. But go ahead and pause if you need to copy down this table. Um, this is for our first example and we'll use this one for our second. Alright, so you're back. And across the top row here, I'm going to write our original. Um, and because we're doing a horizontal shift here or a phase shift, uh, what I'm affecting is all of my x values. My y values are not affected, so my f of x doesn't get affected. Um, but my across the top, this is my standard graph. And those should have been 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and adjust those according to our equation. So if I'm using um, this equation here, my phase shift is right by pi, which means I'm going to make all of my x values pi larger. So I'm going to add pi to all of these values. So my graph that once began at 0 and ended at pi is now going to begin at pi and end at 3 pi. It still has the same period. It still lasts for 2 pi, but it starts at pi and ends at 3 pi. Now please remember that this graph is continuous and it goes on forever in the x direction. But we're only going to graph one period and this is the period that we're going to graph. Since my um, y values didn't change and we know that sine begins at 0, goes to 1, 0, negative 1, and ends at 0, then those values stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight here what we're actually going to be graphing are these points right here. The ones above there, that's my standard graph um, for my x's, and I don't need those any longer. So let's go ahead and put this on the graph. Oops, I guess I'll add a highlighter. Okay. So if this is 0, and I want to mark out um, how long everything, everything, I'll make this pi, this 2 pi, and this 3 pi. So in between those marks, I will mark um, my 3 pi over 2, and my 5 pi over 2. Uh, and those become my other marks here. So I'm at 0, go up to 1, back to 0, to negative 1, and back to 0. And there we have our shifted sine graph. Let's try the next one. So this one I'm going to do a cosine graph for us. 
and it's going to be f of x equals the cosine of x plus pi over 2. So um, across the top, I'm going to write my same standard graph, my standard values, and those were 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. That's not going to change ever for my standards. That's what it is for sine and cosine. But now that I'm going to go with my phase shift, I'm moving left pi over 2, which means I'm subtracting. So all of these values that I have here, I'm going to subtract pi over 2. Uh, my cosine graph, remember, has different f of x values because it does not start at 0. It actually starts at positive 1, goes to 0, negative 1, 0, and back to positive 1. So this graph will already look different than this sine graph because it's cosine. So once again, I'm going to highlight what we're actually going to graph. Oh, I'm in green. We'll highlight in green. So I'm going to highlight this. These are the graph, the points we're going to graph. And we'll grab a pen and we will graph it. So if I'm moving to the left by pi over 2, I'm going to call this pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Then I have 0. Then I have pi over 2. Then I have pi. And then I end at 3 pi over 2. Please try to be consistent in your spacing. Remember, 0 is one of your 5 tick marks that we have. We have negative pi over 2, 0, um, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. Those are your 5 marks. I'm going to go up to 1 and down to negative 1. I begin at 1, then I go to 0, negative 1, 0, back up to 1. And then please make sure you're curving your cosine graph like it should be. And this um, shows my cosine graph shifted to the left by pi over 2. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these next two up there. It'd be best if you went ahead and paused and tried to fill out the table on your own. And then you can unpause and check the table. After you've checked the table, try to go ahead and graph it by yourself. Um, and pause it for that, and then you can unpause and check your graph as well. So here are two more examples of some phase shifts, um, left and right. Okay, so go ahead and pause it and try to get those two um, done on your own here um, by completing the tables. Then check back with the tables before you go ahead to look at the graphs. Okay, so here is my, my table for f of x equals the sine of x plus 3 halves x. 3 halves pi x. So if you've done the table correctly, go ahead and repause the video and you can check back when you've graphed it. Alright, so I've now graphed my sine graph and it's been shifted to the left by 3 pi over 2. I'm going to go ahead and complete the table for the cosine graph. Alright, so here is my table for the cosine graph um, when I have a phase shift of pi over 4 to the right. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. You can pause and check back when you're done. Okay, and there is my cosine graph that's been shifted to the right by pi over 4 radians. Okay, so next up we have vertical translations, and these actually only affect our y values. So when we make that table on the next slide, you'll see it's just my y values that change. All right, so just a reminder, um, this gives us a new I'm going to call it a new horizontal, and that might not be the best words for it, but it basically takes the entire graph and it shifts it either up or it'll shift it down. So you're actually thinking that this value that goes down the middle actually moves as well. Um, so that's something to think about. So let's go ahead and try it. So here's my first one. We're going to try this for these. Um, actually, let's call that 5 so we don't get confused. And we're going to call this or name this one f of x equals the sine of x uh, minus 2. So this time, um, I actually should have this as my standard at the bottom. So I'm going to change this f of x here and make this my standard. Sorry. 
So that'll be our standard down at the bottom. And um, my x values this time don't change. So they're going to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. But my standard across the bottom here, which I will not graph, is actually going to be the original 0, um, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And now I'm going to shift every one of those down by 2 because my vertical translation is down 2. So that makes this negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, um, negative 3, negative 2. So what we will actually graph is these values in here. And I will not graph the standard because we're no longer on our standard um, sine curve. We've been shifted down. And here's how we will do it. Grab a different color so you can see how I'm going to mark this. I'm actually going to axes marked with our standard 1 and negative 1. But our new our new 0, if you will, has been moved down to negative 2. So I'm going to put a little horizontal line there. And this line is for no importance except to help us graph it. But it will remind us that that's where our negative 2's are going to go. So I'm going to mark my x-axis as my pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then I'm going to graph all those points that were once on our x-axis now are on our new axis. And here is our shifted sine curve. It's moved down two spaces. Let's try a cosine graph. So number 6 f of x equals the cosine of x plus 3. So once again, I'm going to change this because I didn't on my slide, and this will be our standard at the bottom. So take a second if you need to draw that. Uh, my x values are not changing because this is a vertical shift, so I'm going to make all my x values um, what they should be, my quadrantal angles. And then my x values, um, which standard would be for the cosine graph, be careful, are 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And now I'm going to add 3 because I have a vertical translation of up 3. So I take all of these values we have for y and I'm adding 3. So I get 4, 3, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? Here we go. So I'm going to draw at positive 3. I'm going to draw this translation. 1, 2, 3. And I still have an amplitude of 1. So it goes from 4 to 2. And if you look, that's my range that we have here. We have a range of from 2 to 4. So that's the points I need to actually graph. Um, and that's our 1, and our 3 is where we shifted. So you can see how I've got my x, my y-axis marked. My x-axis is still going to be marked the same, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And my graph now is going to go 4, 3, 2, 3, 4. And there is my vertical translation on my cosine graph. All right, so I'm going to give you two more here for you to try again. Do it very similar to the way we had done the phase shifts and give it a pause and then come back and pause and come back. And that way you can see if you're doing it on your own. But you also get to check with my answers. Um, don't forget to change this to F or to X and then the standard actually goes on the bottom because we're working with our vertical shifts. So we actually want to change the X values. All right, so f number 7 then will be f of x equals the sine of x um, plus 1 and a half. And number 8, we will do f of x equals the cosine of x minus 2 thirds. 
okay check back with me in a second all right so here is my chart for um, the sine of x plus one and a half um, and I've changed all of my y values and I'm going to go ahead and plot these points on my graph so you can go ahead and pause if you'd like to uh, and you can see the result and there is my results of moving the sine graph up one and a half go ahead and try the cosine okay so this one we move down one um, two-thirds so the shift went down two-thirds and there is my table of values so I'm going to go ahead and plot the graph and then you can check back with me when you're done and there is my cosine graph moved down two-thirds